so what I'm going to go over is uh, the estimated startup costs and income assuming that minimum required planning density, 70,000 an acre, 105,000 for the entire 1.5 acre site. <clears throat> I'm going to focus on the floating bags and floating cages. I got about 15 minutes. Um, the, we're, I'm still working on the suspended gear, so basically we'll, we'll get it out at some point, but I'm going to give you the numbers for floating bags and floating cages. And lastly, that last point's important, this is a new industry. There are a lot of assumptions. You will see that on the next slide. And so take this with a big grain of salt. We're still learning, we're still new in this, but um, I just wanna give you an idea of what, what it's gonna cost you to get into it and what you might expect to make if things go well doing that uh, uh, minimum. Okay, so our assumptions, you plant 70,000 seeds per acre. Uh, so you, you're at the minimum, as I said. You plant them evenly over six months because you're not going to plant them all at once. You're going to kind of uh, plant them through the year. Uh, triploid seed, uh, you can see right there, we're using 8 to 11 millimeter uh, shell height. And someone asked about the cost per thousand. We, we just took an average of some of the uh, uh, nurseries that are selling right now. So $25, $26 per thousand. We're also assuming you are an owner operator. Uh, you're gonna be doing the labor yourself. What that means is you will see some outside labor. We have someone coming in, you know, maybe 100, 200 hours per year uh, is, is hired labor uh, under this scenario, depending on which uh, uh, growing technique we're looking at. But really what this means is when I start showing you net income estimates, Think of that as what you're going to make. That's, that's the, you know, your, your return on your investment or your income. It's your salary, too, because we're not taking that out. Uh, not included in our startup costs, we're assuming you have a boat, a motor, a trailer, and a truck. Some of the gear that Bill mentioned, the tumbler and pressure washer and things like that, we don't have those in there. Uh, you know, you might be doing air drying or something else. We also don't have the survey or marking costs which as you heard, uh, about 1,500 bucks. We're assuming 10 months from plant to harvest, so that's really one thing you'll see when we get to the numbers. Not only do you need to be able to buy the gear, you have to be able to buy the gear and finance your operation for a year, because it's 10 months from when you put your first oysters in till you actually make some money. So you gotta cover a year's worth of operations too. Uh, we're assuming 80% survival and 90% of your oysters are marketable. So what that works out to is you're going to be able to sell 72% of what you plant in this model. So uh, based on Bill's analysis, that might be on the low end. He kind of said if you're below 70, you got a problem. We're kind of right up against it. We're uh, estimating a market uh, price you're going to get 41 cents per oyster. We based that off of uh, in 2018, the Alabama guys did a survey of their growers. The prices range from 30 to 70 cents an oyster with an average around 42, uh, we're at 41. So that's where we are. Um, I, I have heard that right now it's doing a little better. It's, it's closer to 50 cents, maybe even a little above that. So uh, we might be conservative there. We're assuming all your startup costs are self-financed. There's no loans, so we don't have any interest payments in there. And as far as replacing your gear, we just make a basic assumption that each year, 10% of your gear is gonna get lost or damaged or, or you know, just you're gonna to have to replace it for one reason or another. So that's in there. And then lastly, risk are not included. We don't have, when you see these numbers, there's no accounting for a hurricane or a red tide or whatever else can hit. So once again, take these numbers with a grain of salt. So here are our floating bag startup costs. The site setup and regulatory costs that are actually a little low, I learned tonight listening in. It's, a, it's closer to uh, $400. Seed and bag costs, you can see at uh, $25 to $26 per thousand seed, you're, you're buying 105 units uh, to meet the minimum requirement. It's about 2,700 bucks. You've got the uh, four, nine, and 14 millimeter bags, so that's as you're moving them as they get bigger. You need about 360 of them. They run you about five, six bucks a bag, so that's another 2,000. So total seed and bag costs about five grand, a little less. Uh, then you gotta buy floats and ties to get your bags you know, floating in the water. Uh, 
sticking your ID tags on, all that stuff, uh, zip ties on the bags to keep your oysters in there. Uh, that's your biggest uh, cost, about nine grand. Uh, the long line cost to put in your long lines, we have about a thousand bucks to cover this amount of production. And then we have your total other first year costs. And what this is, these are your expenses in the first year, and it goes back to that idea you got a 10 month lag from when you start actually planting to when you're going to harvest. So you need to be able to cover about a year's worth of cost. So you got to come up with 10 grand just to get started. No. Actually, no, you need to come up with about 17.5 to get started. Yeah, 18,000. Sorry, it's at the bottom. Yep, that's, that's the number. When we look at the income statement estimates, what I did was I kind of did a uh, first year and then a second year. And the first year is just to show you that idea that you're not going to make money the first year because you got that lag between when you plant and when you start uh, harvesting your oysters. You can see your, your cost there, seeds, zip ties, hired, uh, hired labor, fuel. We're just kind of guessing at that, replacing capital that gets lost or damaged. Our administrative cost might actually be a little low, but you can see first year, it, it's not gonna make you money. Uh, when you get into the second year and uh, you're planning for six months and harvesting for six months, it starts to get a little better. Uh, we come up with a number for uh, net income before taxes, about 25,000 uh, is what we're, we're estimating with this. Once again, there's a lot of things that can shift this, and this is a static model. So once again, take this with a grain of salt, but this is kind of, given that price, 41 cents an oyster and 72% of them surviving, and no hurricanes or red tides, this is kind of what you're looking at. The floating cage startup costs, it's a little more expensive. Uh, what you'll see is you still buy the bags and the seed, but now you got floating cages, which uh, uh, run you about 220 bucks a cage. Uh, so 54 of them is a, a good chunk of change there, 11, almost 12,000. Uh, you do save money on floats because you don't need those anymore. Uh, you save a little money on your long line costs, but all told you're looking at about 22,000 for the floating cage system. Income. What you'll see here is I've highlighted the things that change from the floating bags. Your hired labor labor's a little more because you flip them and then you got to flip them back a day later. So it, it's gonna, you're going to need a little more help with labor. So you're going to uh, uh, have to pay a little more there. Because you're using more capital, uh, your, your gear's more expensive. As you replace it, it's going to be more expensive if you're losing 10% of it. So uh, we've got that. You know, it comes out, they're, they're fairly similar to the floating bags, uh, a little lower because we had the same assumptions, but as Bill mentioned, you know, it's what can you sell and what can you get for it. It, it could be that floating cages and the air drying you can do with them leads to a more marketable oyster. Uh, what I can tell you is, you know, 25,000 and 23,600 is the difference. So if the floating cage lets me get two cents more on oyster, uh, it, it comes out about even between the two gear types in terms of income. Or if I can, if 4% if more of them survive, comes out even. So it's, it's, it's really close. So your, your key takeaways. Yeah, this isn't what you wanted to hear. You need about 17 to 22,000 to get started. Even if you have a boat and a truck and, and that, like I said, that doesn't include your marking and, and your lease survey costs. You're gonna lose money your first year. I mean, that's just, you're a farmer now and you gotta plant stuff and wait till it grows. That's just the way it is. At the minimum production level, uh, 70,000 planted per acre, your profitability depends on your effort. How much time is it taking you? Because as I said, you know, that net income number, we haven't put your salary in there, what you're paying yourself. So if you get efficient and you can do this as a, you know, a part-time job, that pay rate is pretty good, 22 to 24 bucks an hour um, as an owner operator. If it takes you 40 hours per week, 11 to 12 isn't as nice. And when you start thinking about the risk, you have to consider too, things like red tide, hurricanes, things like that, that aren't in there, it's even less nice. The last point I wanna make is the income for oysters. I don't know if anyone saw that. It, it kind of talks to what Bill said about people thinking they're planning 50 cent pieces. 31 to 33 cents an oyster sounds good in this model, 
But as an owner operator, there's only one of you. And as you plant more and more, you know, there are only so many day, hours in a day, you're not going to be able to do all the labor yourself at some point. So that income per oyster is going to go down as you have to hire more labor. So that's it. I'll take any questions. If you, if, if you have questions later, I got my contact information there. Uh, we're working on potentially getting some of this stuff up for you, but, but that's what we got. You know, probably the first year you make 25000 really good. So you're making $12,500 a year for the first two years. If you're going to average it out over the two, yeah, yeah, something like that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really, once you get up to full-scale production, you're starting to look better, but it, you know, it might take a little while to get there. Now, my model assumed that, you know, you had to hit that 105,000 oyster mark in the first year, and it sounds like it's more like the second year you have to hit it. I mean, you'll get a, a, maybe a nasty letter if you don't hit it the first year, but... We just go and buy a bunch of corn, put it in the dirt, and let it grow, and then sell it to the market. I got some farmers that would tell you that ain't easy either, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah.